guys and welcome back. Today I am working on the Sun Tarot card. This was a really fun challenge. It was one of the cards that I knew would be the most opposite of how I usually like to paint, what I like to paint. So I decided I would tackle it pretty early on in the process so I could hopefully get at it while I have plenty of energy still for the project. Uh, but this card, it means good fortune and happiness, positivity. So all really great things, but in my artwork, I tend to like to show things a little bit darker and I do really like using cool colors more and blacks and this really demanded warm colors. It's the sun after all. It was uh, it was fun to think about it, to, to kind of wedge myself out of that uh, typical rhythm that I like to work in. And I like to work in it for a reason, so it's certainly not something that I feel like I need to say goodbye to, but it's always fun to take a little bit of a, a variation from that. It helps me to realize some of the things that that I love doing and want to continue, but also maybe some of the things that maybe I haven't given it as much thought and it's just kind of muscle memory. But yeah, it was a, it was a fun thing to start thinking about. I knew that going into this card, I did not want to do the, the typical Rider Waite iconography that's on the card of the child on a horse and the sun behind it. I wanted to create my own character that represented and embodied these different attributes and I wanted her to just feel like this very positive, joyful character. And I spent a lot of time on the color comp for this one. Sometimes they come together really fast, other times I really have to work at it a lot more. And I, I think it was for a few things, because I was using warm colors, it meant that I was picking from colors that I don't normally pick from. So there were a few more options that I felt like I could play around with that I would normally steer away from. So there were more things opened up for me that I was enjoying and I was enjoying playing with different different warmths and coolnesses of like reds or yellows and how they paired together. But I also found that I struggled a little bit with finding the right balance of of uh, dark and light in this piece because it, when I'm first thinking of the sun, I'm thinking of staring right at the sun and it's just blindingly white, but that's not what I wanted for the piece. I wanted there to be more contrast and I love painting with black. Uh, so I decided to actually do her hair as a very dark color, which my first initial thought when I was planning out this piece was that I was going to give her like a, a white glowing hair, but I changed my mind <laughs> and I, I went less of a fantastical representation of the sun, which I really enjoy doing that. I, I enjoy pushing things a little bit more in that direction, but but this time I decided that it really I really wanted that element, that dark element, to be tied throughout the piece since I can show her flowing hair. That helped a lot. I think it broke up a lot of the things that I was struggling with, and it allowed me to keep that really bright white for other areas of the painting, like her dress. And this painting, the Sun, will be the Patreon exclusive for May. So if you'd like a print of her, the only way to get that is to make sure to sign up for the print tier over on my Patreon by May 31st. There's a link in the description that'll take you over there. And eventually she'll be part of my own deck that will be completed and that'll be really fun. But for now, the only way to get her as a print is to sign up. There's again, that link in the description. And one of the challenges that I was really excited about for this painting, I wanted to find a way to make her hair look really glowy. Like if you've seen those photographs of, of someone with a really bright light behind their head, like the sun, and their head is silhouetted and their hair is just like on fire. It looks so bright and also really saturated. That's what I wanted for this. I definitely don't think that I perfectly embodied that look that I wanted, but it was closer than my last attempt at trying to get this like backlit rim light for the hair. So I was a lot happier with that. I really enjoyed the process. Eventually we'll get to the part where I paint it, but I, I basically just went in with areas that were right in front of the sun where it got really thin. That's where I went in with more of a saturated red color and painted the entire strand of hair that bright red color. And then I surrounded that by really bright yellowy colors and then finally white colors to outline it. And that layered effect, it did help it look like areas where the hair was thinner and there was more sun shining through. 
the brighter it got and the more saturated it got. Something that I've been noticing that is a really interesting challenge, one that I have to be a little bit more aware of, is that when I'm working on my color comps digitally, which I do for my oil painting, I have to desaturate my oil paints, which seems really obvious. Oil paints have a very wide range of colors possible, and that saturation level is far higher than I've been able to achieve with most watercolors. So when I'm doing color comps like this for watercolors, I, I always have to really carefully desaturate my, my digital color comp so that when I'm working traditionally, it's a little bit closer. I can actually get in the ballpark. But when I'm working on this, I've noticed that I will oversaturate the mixtures of paint because I'm just used to going as far saturated as I can and I need to work on adjusting that, but it's kind of fun. The, the top end is far higher that I have more of my fingertips when I do want it to be more saturated. But some of the areas that I really need to focus on is in skin. I tend to, to shoot right towards really, really saturated with all of my skin tones I've been trying to be more aware of that. And this one was no exception. I, I mixed her hair, or her skin very, very saturated at the first. So I had to remix it, paint differently. And that helped a lot. It made her look a lot more human. I also ended up painting the background more saturated than what was in my digital color comp, but I liked it. I liked it in the final and I decided to not repaint it that's kind of a big part, well it is a big part of the process of painting for me is that I can have my color comp that works great as a map and a starting off point, but at some point I need to be able to set that aside and look at the piece that I'm working on and work with what's there. And I think that can be said about any plans going into a piece is that sometimes those plans need shifted a little bit that as you're working on it using the specific paints that you're using and the pigments or techniques when you're on the real final piece it can shift what actually needs to happen in the painting so i'm trying to be more loose with that i'm trying to let myself see what i'm working on and adapt it a little bit more sometimes i get really stuck in wanting it to be like that original plan or like my color comp to the point that i i overwork things that looked really good on its own it fit well the colors were working well and then i i feel like it has to be more towards that original thought so i'm trying to let myself see it for what it is and adapt it as it needs to be so one of my main goals moving forward with oil painting is I want to get the correct color mixed the first time before I apply it to the painting. I kept making this mistake. I still make this mistake all the time, but I'm trying to be more aware of it. So I'll, I'll mix something that's just not quite right, but I haven't taken the time to hold it up to say my painting to make sure that it's color matched correctly. Anyways, I feel like I, well, I have been much better in this piece than I have in the past getting it right the first time, paying attention, looking at what I mixed, making sure I was happy with it. This seems like really, really fundamental steps to take. And I, I think I'm just a much more impatient artist than I thought. And I knew I was already, but this is a little bit too much for me. But this piece, I feel much happier with it. With the whole process, it felt a lot less frustrating than past ones where I have had to repaint everything at some point because it wasn't quite right and it wasn't really blending right with the other colors or I just didn't have the right value mixed. Countless things that I just didn't quite get right on the first try and sometimes I didn't get right on the second try or even the third try. It can be a very frustrating process if I'm not being present and aware with it. So this piece just came together so much faster than the last tarot card that I did, the Herophant. That one took ages longer than this one. So it felt really refreshing and exciting to work on her because it just, things just came together because I put more prep work into it. Uh, and I, I think that that's a lesson that can be continued everywhere else is that, like I said, I know I'm an impatient artist. I, I tend to want to rush past the like setting up stuff, the prep stuff, the sketching. I just want to get to the thing, to the final 
painting and sometimes I, I rush through things that shouldn't be rushed through. And when I give those things more time, the painting turns out better, the process is more enjoyable. Countless beneficial things happen when I give time to the things that deserve time. And I loved working on this dress. This dress is really fun. I, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more mm, fantastical maybe. That's not quite the right word. It's just not terribly realistic in the way that I was painting it. I wanted it to have white line work and that didn't actually hit me until I had the base layers of the dress painted, but I decided that I wanted to do the white line work or the, yeah, I think it was white. It's almost white anyways. I, I love that. I love doing that digitally and I do it in my digital paintings pretty frequently where I'll have a much lighter line work and it really pops off, but I don't do it as much with my traditional work, probably mostly because in watercolors in the past, I haven't been using an opaque medium for the line work. So it pretty much always has to be darker, which I don't like, but I've found a way around that. That's not an issue anymore, but I think that that tends to be the thought process that I have with line work often, but with oils, they're opaque or they can be. So I'm able to go in with white and do really light, bright line work, which pops out and it does something really interesting and different than a darker line work would, which is what I wanted for this dress. I wanted the dress to feel really luminous and bright, like sunlight. And it was really fun to work on it, to be able to just play with it and enjoy mixing different really light shades of peach and white and yellow and a little bit of pink. <laughs> it was just, it was a fun area to spend some time painting and adding little details to. And eventually when it does, when it did dry, I went back in with a little bit of red, added some little dots here and there in the dress. I, I just love little details like that, that tie in somewhere else to the piece. It's similar to the background and to her hair. And it uh, just gives it a little bit more contrast to what was happening behind the dress, something more to look at and to think about. And yeah, I love that. I love the ability to add details like that with oils. That's one of the things that is just really great at is that you can add more on top of it. And I like doing that. I like being able to let something enter my brain while I'm working on a piece and find a way to, to include it in it, in my pieces. I will say I really struggled with her eyes in this piece. It was really frustrating because it was entirely an avoidable problem and I saw it coming. <sighs> I do this all the time. I have the thought, oh, don't do that. Don't do that yet. You're, you're gonna make it, that's not gonna work. And then I disregard that and I just do it anyway. And then I regret it. For the eyes, when I painted the line art, for the eyelashes and then like, I guess it's like makeup around the bottom of her eyes, but it ended up being too dark. I painted that when her skin was not fully dry. And the problem with that is that it makes it much, much harder to correct mistakes of line work if the layer below it isn't totally dry because I can paint on top of it. It'll accept the paint perfectly fine. But if I go off kilter at all <laughs> with the line work, I can't just go in and clean it up with Q-tip because it's going to take out the paint underneath it. And that's exactly what happened. I knew that I shouldn't do it, but I thought oh, I'll, I'll be able to get it right the first time. No problem, no issue. And of course there was issue. I wasn't happy with it. It was a little asymmetrical and I made the bottom lash line way too dark. So it looked like an outline around the entirety of her eye. So I had to revisit that area several times. That was the, the point of frustration for this piece, really the only point, which I guess is okay. But, <laughs> but the eyes, I really, I just want them to be good. That's where our eyes go when we're looking at a piece. We look at the eyes of the character. So yeah, <laughs> maybe that's just one of those countless lessons that I'll listen to sometimes is that I need to listen to that voice that's telling me just wait and let it dry and be patient. I really enjoyed the process of working on this piece. It was just a lot more straightforward and less frustrating than my last one. Really refreshing. I liked that. But again, she is available as a print exclusively this month only. So make sure to sign up for the print tier over on my Patreon by May 31st, and you'll be able to get a print of the sun. And that tier also comes with the sticker pack of the month, which is bioluminescent mermaid themed, which will be really fun. So again, I'll have that link down in the description that'll take you over there. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.